And my name is Kay Dean Fadipaya and I did a monologue called The Man of Beer Bar by Lynn Nottage. Um, we loved the way you told the story, very fantastic. Um, but by it being fantastic, um, I assume the attempt is to get um, the story of the Congolese women out there so that the world has a better knowledge of what's going on. Um, how important is this to you to help in the chronic problem in, in Congo and how do you feel that we should do this? Um, I think it's very important. I think for all artists, everybody wants to feel like you're doing something that's making a difference. Mm -hmm. and. The, the situation in Congo is horrific, but it's so dramatic that when it comes to different forms of storytelling, it's the, it's just it's incredible to be part of something that shows the wider audience something that's real that people are going through today, not a play that was set 50 years ago or 100 years ago, but something that's actually happening today. Um, I think that you know culturally we have a responsibility as human beings to to tell the story of what's going on to people who are, le who are less fortunate. And um, being African as well, it's very, I feel, you know, a huge responsibility to be involved in really anything that has a purpose, has a voice, gives people a voice that would normally never have a voice. And the people who are suffering in Congo are primarily, I mean, it's all people, all families, but it's women and children of all ages uh, who are suffering. So, and being involved with anything that um, can highlight this is, I think for all artists, is yeah, it's very important. Do you feel literature is like um, a powerful tool to get in the story out there? Definitely. I think that um, the best way to get people informed and inspired and desperate to change something is to give them a peephole into another life, another world. It's easy to just to give statistics or just tell people stories when you show them real mm -hmm. human beings, real people. Uh, living, trying to survive, and constantly being barraged, you know, living through a civil war, it, it, I, I think there's nothing, nothing can touch it. It's the best way of showing, of getting change, is, is to show people something real in front of them, which is what theatre does. Film does that too, but you don't have that barrier. You're right there, and you can see it. And you know that it's acting, it's performance, but it's very, very real, and human beings have the most incredible imagination, and we can empathise and make something that's artificial real. And that's something Lynn Nottage, who wrote this monologue, does brilliantly. She wrote a play called Ruined at the Almeida, which myself and Jenny Jules were in. And, and, it's, and she went to Congo several times and was inspired to write this play and then to write this monologue, um, which she wrote actually from a trip in Uganda, but she set, she set it in Congo. And it's just, the, it touches, I think theatre touches people like, nobody, like nothing else. And, um, whether it's showing people apartheid in South Africa, you know, and I think uh, Jenny was telling this amazing story of how, you know, when she was over here, you, you know, she was a young one over here, and they used to hear about apartheid, and, you know, nobody did anything. And then there were these, there was this amazing play that touched people, went on a tour around this country, and people were like, wow, this is, how can this be happening just over the ocean? And that affected change, that affected a law being passed in Parliament. The you know England started to put pressure on South Africa sanctions. They withdrew, that, and that affects the government in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's in, I think theatre is incre It's just an incredible tool um, to affect change. There's just nothing like it. So, would you definitely say that, like, compared to novels and poems, theatre is more in something with like that with, with the situation in Congo. It's more a, a more powerful tool. I think it is because with theatre you have a, a mass of people sitting together watching something and there's nothing like you know sometimes when you go and see a play and when people are laughing around you it it makes you, you laugh. laugh or like you, you the, the vibe in the room is incredible when you're watching something really powerful the air is so thick and people come out of the theater and they feel like they've gone through something and the book can be powerful but it's just you reading this book and you say to someone read this book and i mean books have done amazing things whether it's roots or you know there's all sorts of books that people have read that has changed so much of the way we see the world, but I, I, I really, I personally just don't think that I personally think that nothing can beat theatre. This just, I think, is the most powerful tool because it's people, it's actors sitting in someone else's shoes and presenting, you know, presenting a life of someone that isn't there, and you're taking that person on, you're being that person, you're showing that person's life and struggles, and then and the play ends, and what's the audience left with? All these thoughts and questions and 
And I really think people can be changed, even if it's just by a little bit. People are changed in some way when they come out of the play. You know? So and when, you, when you're writing about something like a place like Congo and people like the Congolese people who have been at war, what is it, 14, 15 years this war's been going on, and it's such a complicated, how do you explain to people the situation in Congo? It's like, where do you start? It's, it's, you, things happening in the East are so different to what's happening in the capital. People in the capital of Congo don't know what's happening in the Turi district. They don't know what's happening in the East. You know, the, it's not, it's, there isn't that much stuff on their TV or their radio. There is more now, but how do you explain that this, the problem in Congo goes right back to King Leopold? How do you explain the genocide in Rwanda affecting how that instigated what happened in Congo, all these countries fighting over Congo and getting involved? How do you, like, where do you start mm -hmm. explaining the millions of people that have been raped from two-year-olds to 90-year-olds? It's like, it's too big a concept for people to understand. It's like this horror. So what Lynn does is she takes, she takes characters, she puts them in a setting, like, like with, with Ruin, she puts them in a brothel and she shows you these women and they're funny and they're strong and they're family, they fight, they're constantly trying to get money, they're just constantly trying to survive and she just throws things at them and you just follow them with this journey, you come up and they're just like, and by the end their lives are completely different but you've invested so much in them. And us, the cast of Ruin, we were all just like, we were mostly Africans, one Congolese actor and the rest of us were just from different, Africans and Afro caribbeans and, it was like this is about our brothers and sisters and mothers and uncles and we thought that so we the cast thought that after five weeks of rehearsals i don't think there was any way the audience couldn't think that mm. so that i think that's what a good writers like lynn Lottage does i can't even remember what that first question was i've just talked on for so long it's but, so um, cool yeah. <laughs> it's so cool yeah. um you expose and lynn Lottage, she exposes a lot of um the horrors and atrocities that people in congo face um is there any joys and and happiness that we should feel we missed. Definitely, everything happens. I think the ending of Ruins is just a, the glimmer of hope. And one thing, you know, we we used to we were really really lucky. We had Lynn in rehearsals for four weeks out of five. She was in oh. the room. We could ask her any question we wanted. And you know, we used to be like, oh, how do they get through? How do they whatever? And she was like, it's not a play about hope. It's a play about resilience. And that's the one thing the Congolese people have. They are resilient. You know. And they they have dreams. They, these girls, and we watch this documentary. And these girls who have been, who have fistula, you know, which is when the, the, the muscle between the vagina and the anus has split, from because of rape, uh, which is not not everyone has that. That's what that that's a, that's what that extreme condition is called. And they're all in this hospital called Pansies, uh, which where you can where they're waiting to be fixed, to have this operation. And they're these girls, you know, they're like it's like boarding school. They fight. They bitch. They're rough with each other but then they reenact marriages they pretend they're holding babies and they sing everyone gets involved and it's like they're they just they still see themselves as people that can get married and have babies and they have this you know they, they still want life and they still want to you know to live and i think that the congolese people, I, I personally learned so much just from doing that play because of how resilient these people are even listening to their music you know the things that happen to them and they still sing there was so much singing in ruined there's mute the music is beautiful it's this in one of the most beautiful places on earth this incredible rainforest there is i think there is the, if you show people nothing but depression and just whack them over their heads they'll come out and be like well what do we you know ruin barely barely touch the, the the top of the surface of what is actually happening in congo but you can't show everything and so i think i think that yeah i think just as we're human beings and we people go through traumatic things and some people get through it and some people don't. But the Congolese people are, you know, what, what can you say? It's an ongoing thing, you know, there isn't an ending, a conclusion. But I think from Ruined and from the monologue from Banana Beer Bath, Bath they just, that those girls, the three sisters right at the end, they got themselves out of that trough and they'd lost everything. Everything they'd had was gone, but they were still grateful to be alive. And we, sometimes we think, what would we do in that situation? Uh, he would put one foot in front of the other. Until okay. someone cut you down, you would keep going. When they cut you down, you you find two stubs and stick them in your leg, <laughs> and then you keep you know. So that I think that I don't know what you call that, but I guess it's just resilience. Yeah. Thank you, Absolutely. thank you. I mean, really inspired by what you read out today, and thank you yeah. to Lynn Nottage as well. Yeah. Um, should we be watching this space for any future projects? Good grief! Um, <laughs> I don't know. We all know when I know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Thank you so thank you much. much, and it was lovely meeting you. Thank you. You Bye. too.